Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a risk. Good morning, everyone. Just finishing writing up today's wine text. I will be right with you. I'll finish it later. I'll make you sit through it. Morning, good morning, morning. Morning to tea with Gary B. We are in, uh, starting to get towards mid May and we're in it. Good morning, everybody on, let's see, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Great to see all of you this morning. Big shout out to Max, Brian and Body, Scott Paschal, We see Ashwin. Good to see you. Flip Daddy Babes. What's good? Satesha, Sachella. B, what's, what's, what's up? Andy S, KJ Delmer, Hunter Boone, and all of my other friends. Please take a screenshot of this and share the URL that you have in your browser right now uh, and get your homies and your friends on here. Dustin, good morning. How was your weekend? Excellent. Like Bill and Ted's? Exactly. I haven't watched that in a long time, actually. <laughs> they, they made a new one, right? And didn't do super well, right? I, oh, I thought it was just in like a talks of a new one. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, me neither. All right. Good. Let's get in the show. Cool. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Adeletta. Adeletta. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Gary. How's it going? Super well. Thanks for asking. Good. What's cooking? Yeah. Nothing. I'm over here. It's uh, 6 a.m. my time. I'm on uh, the West Coast, so I have my coffee next to me. And I want to talk today a little bit about TikTok. So I know you're obviously on there. I am also active on there. I was pretty quick to jump on it because I saw an opportunity and I wanted to be kind of ahead of the curve. So let's talk about the strategy behind it. I'm, I'm past the point of should I be on there? What is the best strategy on actually being there? The How many times should you post a day? What kind of content do you find a niche? Um, you know, how long should the video be? Those are the types of questions I have more about strategy versus should I get on TikTok, you know? So the early things I'm seeing is one, there, there doesn't seem to be at this point any disadvantage at posting as often as possible. You see some people posting as many as 10 times a day yeah. and, reap, and reaping the benefits. Um, so... At times a day, I like to throw out three and four because I think it's truly manageable mm -hmm. uh, if you're fully ambitious and all the way there and you're over the mental hurdle of worrying about likes and doing yeah. anything to say. Um, as far as what to put out, I always think that the right strategy is putting out what you want versus what you think is working. Yeah. So, you know, when I got on Instagram, what was working was incredible photography. Mm -hmm. Instagram was a photography. Right, right. And I mean, business and mindset content. Like, you know, and it took a little while, but it really then kind of kicked in. And so um, if you look at Twitter, if you look at MySpace, right, MySpace was music, hardcore yeah. music. And then Tila Tequila and Dane Cook and others could win on that platform, comedians, models, things of that nature. So as far as what to put out, I think that you need to put out what you want to be talking about. However, being thoughtful about copy overlay, what song to use in the background, using the hashtag for your page, you know, you know, for you page, you know, FYP, things like that. So there are tactics within it. But, yeah. I would, but if you're, but if you want to talk about, you know, hiking, I don't think you should go and start twerking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, and then there's duets. And mm -hmm. reaction videos, there's there's subtle tactics within the platform. There's the ability to DM and reach out to do collaborations. Um, there's the ability to use your Instagram stories and your Instagram feed and your Twitter account to build awareness towards your TikTok. So yeah. There's a lot of strategies underneath there, you know? Yeah. Have you seen a shift of the people who follow on other platforms go to TikTok or brand new audience? I feel like they're a lot younger from my perspective, my normal um, demographic would be women who are 25 to 45 and TikTok, you've got like the 14 year olds who think they've got life all figured out. So have you seen kind of that younger shift? Yeah, I, I think the platform skews younger, but I think over the last six months, it's gotten dramatically older. Yeah. And I think within a year, it becomes kind of omnipresent from six to 45, meaning mm -hmm. everybody's kind of on it. Yeah. And, um, and then it just kind of goes back to 
my point always, which is a pl- if a platform's destined to be a major platform and sticks around for three years, in that three years of its heat moment, it will hit every demo except kind of 50 to older. And then, yeah. then you need another kind of three to five years to go 50 and older, like you've seen with Facebook, Facebook and like you've seen with Instagram. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of where I think it's at right now. Yeah. So trajectory, do you think TikTok will be around for a little bit longer? When you mentioned MySpace, that was kind of the first social media I was ever on. So it's interesting, you know, obviously that's not really used as much anymore. So do you see trajectory of, you know, longer lifespan? I think platforms are like TV shows. You know, some shows are destined to be hot for 24 months, Vine, TV shows, Empire. Yeah. Other, other shows are destined for 15, 20 year runs, The Simpsons, yeah. Facebook. So, you know, I'm not crippled by that because whatever audience you're able to build on TikTok, you're able to build awareness in that platform. And then when Jigjaw comes out and we all go there, when you go over there, a certain percentage of your TikTok audience comes along. Yeah. Right. You know, if, if I hadn't built everything that I've built in other platforms, there's no way I'm at 3.5 million followers on TikTok. Right. So I think too many people worry about like, is this a fad? That's what people told me about the internet in 1996 when I launched my library.com. It's not about fads. It's about when something's on fire, you play it. And then when it's not, it's not. When a club is hot, you go there. When it peters out, you go to the next hot club. Yeah. When, when a restaurant is fucking the shit, you go and eat there. And when it's not, you don't. And for some reason on social networks, people are so audacious about wasting their time mm-hmm. without realizing what they should be doing is marketing on the platform and extracting brand value. Absolutely. Awesome. I love it. Thank Take you care. so much. You're welcome. Take care. Yep. Hey, Gary, how are you? Hey, Taz, how are you? Yeah, not bad. How's, uh, how was your weekend? Very nice. How was yours? Awesome. Yeah, no, pretty good. It's, um, it's currently 11 o'clock here in Australia. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm a full-time wedding filmmaker. Um, my younger brother and I own a uh, wedding film business and we've been doing that for about three or four years now. Uh, I've recently actually decided to start a personal brand around, um, creating free content on teaching wedding films. And I actually just started a TikTok uh, probably about a week ago. Um, you can get up me for not doing that sooner, but uh, just doing like uh, free sort of wedding tips for brides. And so I was, um, I was telling my mom about this idea. And by the way, like my mom's awesome. Both my parents are always supporting everything I'll do. Uh, but she brought up the point that if I'm sharing our tips and tricks, wouldn't that essentially create more competition uh, for ourselves? But, um, but th- that's not really my question. My question was because she just got me thinking, how exactly do we distinguish between opinions and like actual advice? Um, it's a really good question. So I, I think it comes down to a couple things. One, um, I always judge the person that is giving the opinion or the advice. So how many big businesses has your mom built? Zero. That's a good starting point, right? She, to your point, she's fantastic and she's... Uh, so supportive. And I think her opinion slash advice on this issue has validity, right? There is a lot of common sense to the notion of if you're giving away your secrets, are you putting yourself in a vulnerable spot? The reality is my opinion after 22 years of doing business professionally and longer intuitively as a kid is the world is abundant and winners win. And I think the way the internet works with branding, I actually think you gain business. I mean, I've lived that life, right? There's plenty of people who have taken my advice and packaged it up and sold it against my own fan base and have been able to extract money out of my fan base by repackaging what I do for free. And it's silly to watch and I laugh at it, but I don't think it's come at my expense. So I think my biggest barometer between opinion and advice is first, advice is opinion and opinion is advice. And of course, so yeah. what I spend all my time on is judging the person who delivered it. And then right. even when somebody, even when Jeff Bezos would give me advice, I would say, okay, but he's coming from the perspective of how Amazon was built. And I think that could be the case. Or if I paid attention to him, one of the things that I spend a lot of time on is not giving advice or opinions or thoughts or hyperbole around how it happened for me. For me, it's more about observations, not what happened with me. Obviously, there's some things that have happened with me, 
Um, and so that's kind of a, that's kind of how I see it. Right. Yeah. Cause I guess, you know, obviously being in a position where I'm obviously still learning and maybe, maybe I can't judge, like maybe I can't accurately judge whether they know what they're talking about or not. So obviously with you, I know a lot about you. I've been following you for a few years now. And so I trust, and I know you should say you shouldn't, you know, always trust uh, even your opinion, but, uh, or your advice, but obviously I know that your, uh, your comments are going to have more weight or more validity behind someone, you know, Joe down the street. Uh, so I, I guess it's just that coming from that position of, yeah, judging, you know, whether they have that validity or not. Which ultimately led me to not listening to anybody, but valuing yeah. experience over opinion. Yes. Okay, and, not, right. and not being fearful of being wrong. Yep. That's Sounds it. pretty simple. <laughs> All of it's simple. We make it complicated. Yes. Yeah. I think we overthink things a lot of the time. Agreed. All right, mate. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers, Thank Gary. You. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Hey, Dustin. Yeah. Am I not coming in good? I see some people struggling. It's a little, it's a little on the quiet side. All right, let me, right. Uh, let me I just heard your mom laugh, though. Fair enough. Hold on. <laughs> Test. Test. Yeah, hold on one second. What about now? It's better. Can you hear me? Yeah. Better? All right, yeah. let's rock and roll. Cool. Gary. Daniel, what's good? What's up? How are we doing? Things are good. I'm super nervous today. Well, I just wanted to say thank okay. you so much. Where are you from? I'm from Australia as well. I'm from Melbourne, so it's nighttime here. It seems to be a nice. Seems back to, to back be, Aussies. It's a day for Australians. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. This has been uh, this has been a journey, and um, you know, really looking forward to talking to you. I'm a bit nervous as well. So, um, what I wanted to start with was a little bit about my background, just to lead up to my question. So, um, so basically, when I was like six years old. My grandmother passed away, who I was very close with. And similar to you, I come from a like half Russian and Polish background on my mom's side and Italian on my dad. So I experienced sort of like loss at a very early age. Um, when I was 10, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and she got sick. And then when I was 16, she passed away. Um, so I went through quite a lot of stuff in my life. And after I finished high school here in, in you know, when I was 18, I, I really struggled like mentally. It was hard to finish school. I went through a lot of depression. I went through all sorts of challenges and suicidal thoughts and that kind of stuff. And I really went through like the, the dark night of the soul. And so at about 25, um, I started to sort of come out of that. And, you know, here I am today and I'm, I'm doing good and I want to help people. I've been through a lot of stuff. I put a lot of work on myself. I've done a lot of things to improve myself. So I want to give you that backdrop. So the question I have for you is, despite having followed you for a while, and also um, all this investment I've done into myself, I feel like I'm still operating at 40 or 50% of my potential. And I, I sabotage myself or hold myself back. And I know that what I have to say and what I, have to, what I want to give to people is so valuable, but yet there's a part of me that it's conflicting, that I, I, like, I value myself at times and then I don't value myself. And then I'm, I, I'm fearful of trying to sell myself, similar to like Danielle from Friday, like I, I lack that, like I know so much that I have good intentions. Like I, I'm coming from a heart space, but. Um, well, what are you trying to sell? Well, at this point, that's the thing. I mean, so I used to be a personal trainer and I studied also holistic health. Um, so I want to get into the speaking uh, realm and, and world. And what I'm thinking of doing now is I already have a brand name for the business, which is Head Body. But at the moment I'm working on the personal brand, which is obviously my name. And I want to combine sort of the, how to help people in their life with all the holistic aspects. So not just the mental side, but the nutrition and the diet and all that other stuff, you know, hydration and the thoughts because they all play a role. So I want to combine both worlds. Okay. Um, but, but I, it's kind of funny cause like I was originally asked to be on the show on Thursday. And so it was like last minute type thing. And I felt like you were like Jedi mind fucking me because I felt <laughs> I felt you. I felt you. I just heard your voice. Like, put out more content. Put out more content. So, 
like Friday I didn't get on and it's just been like I've had these extra days so I've been really trying to put out as much content as I and can. What have, what have you noticed in those four days? Um, in terms of what particularly? Anything? Have you, you know, because the reality is there's so many people that want to speak, want to coach, want to build a personal brand. And the problem is to be successful in that, you need leverage. You need people to give a fuck. Exactly. And the and the way to give a get people to give a fuck is to put out ungodly amounts of content for free and to speak for free before people are willing to pay you. Because what you're doing is building brand. It, you know, most people confuse sales and branding and marketing. And so there is no shortcut to building a brand. Nike almost went out of business seven years into its company. Like people are wildly confused. There's four billion Gary Vaynerchuk's and Daniel L's. Yeah. And so, you know, I get it. Like everybody feels like they have something to say. I mean that Daniel, every single person actually feels like they have something to say. The, the separation is the execution. Yeah. Yeah. I actually was thinking about that too and then thinking about actually wanting to ask you that because I, I literally part one of the questions I sent in to you guys was was exactly that. How do I get people to give a fuck enough to hear what I have to say? How do you earn by, the trust of your by, by, by putting you? out your by putting out your best truths, by by being honest, by talking about things you know, by telling stories, by so communicating. On, on this page that I have here, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I don't ask for anything. I don't have any products at the moment to sell. I'm just giving everything I know. The, 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 big, the biggest issue I see in the market is a lot of people start something, they hear me, then they realize I'm not gonna give, I'm gonna give away for free. But in the back of their mind, they know that they're going in for the sale at some point. And that, and that polar push really is a struggle. You know, like it's a struggle. Like I think that a lot of like to me, the best way to eventually start a business is once the demand's there. A lot of people try to create the demand, but subconsciously, not even consciously, subconsciously, they're building only towards eventually having the product. They focus on things like the name of the company, like you do. Mm. You know, the name doesn't mean anything. Literally zero. The name of your company and brand actually means zero. The ability to build it is everything. Names are made. The fuck does Google mean? Or Nike? Or exactly. Beats by Dre? Or Under Armour? Or Champion? Or Sprayground? Adidas? None of these fucking things mean dick. Nobody gives a fuck. Coca Cola? They were made. Names are names don't matter. You know. That's true. It's you know, true. If, my name's Gary Vaynerchuk. If I was built, you know, I made it. Not like my name's not Johnny fucking Wonderful. You know what I mean? People are just super confused by that. They spend time on the name. They, you, you, and I don't, I don't judge this. I have empathy for this. You're, yeah. you're thinking about what product and service are you eventually going to sell again, conscious or not, you need them. You're building money. I get it. You know, one of the great advantages I have is I don't have a framework that monetizes my audience. That's you know, I don't, you. Like when you're not Gary V and you don't need to monetize your audience, and it's not, I'm not trying to monetize more audience in the sense of like maliciousness or. You know, I, I agree. I agree. I don't, like, I don't. I don't want to work. Like I was washing dishes for my dad. Shout out to my dad. But I was, I was washing dishes for my dad, you know, doing a job that really made me miserable prior to COVID. And so I, I don't want to do that job that you always say, you know, go do that shitty job so you can build this thing. So like. Is that possible though to, to do that? Can I? Of because course, it, of course it's possible, but you have to understand supply and demand. There are literally right now 15 to 100 million people trying to do the same exact thing as you are. So, so when I tell people to tell their story and to stay in their lane, their only way to win is to make it super personal. The only reason I break through and others break through is it's my truth. People can follow me and make quote cards and put on their Instagram. And they're like, damn, why does Gary Vee fucking, you know, win? He's just saying the same motivational thing. No, I'm not. I'm saying my thing, my truth, my actual truth. Mm. So I, I think you need to, your breakthrough is in your actual truth. Well, it's your, funny you said because with like TikTok, like I started TikTok and I, and I noticed, I was like, I put out a video and it just, it was one of the trends. And I was like, I felt so shit about it. I was like, this isn't me. Like, this is what's trending and what's going to get hits. And it didn't. And it probably didn't because my feeling was like, this Correct. isn't. Trending. 
So I actually put out a video today, which was so much more my truth. And I was like, I felt so good about it. And I didn't care as much about the about how many followers or, or how many views I got because it just felt real. Like I was honoring Brother, my, you know? do, you, do you know in the early years, my favorite part of not having anybody watch it was knowing one day everybody would watch it? Yeah, but how do you get to that? How do you try? That's the thing I struggle with. Like, try because, be, because I'm good at what I do. You need to, you need to make, you have to have a sense of like, do you think, you know, I'm good at being fully me. I'm good at telling my shit to your point. Yeah. So you know, what, like, do you, what do you think it's going to take then for me? I think it's, to, I think, I think it's going to take you tell, telling, telling, I think it's going to take you telling stories about the darkness, about that loss, about hit where you were, about things you've seen, things you learned washing dishes, things you learned, you know, just stories true stories true stories true I stories vulnerable already have just put that out there it seems like a strength for me but sometimes it can be a weakness i feel but i i'm very open with with my stuff because i want it to come from a place where it's not like me 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 it's more like i get you like i want to relate to people and and then help guide them through their own stuff based on what i've also experienced i totally understand and i think the way you do that is volume across the board volume across the board be everywhere you know like to me i'm actually on a mission and i think a lot of people are on like a half pregnant mission mm. you know like i'm genuinely on that same mission bro i feel genuinely. You. what you talk about with death and stuff i think about all the time like and legacy and like what i want to be known for and how i like what country like my life my whole life's purpose like if i'm going to go through all this loss and stuff you know, you had Eric Thomas on 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 uh, Daily V, I think, or one of those one of the shows you got, and he says something like, "You know, if you're gonna go through all this pain, get something out of your pain." So it's like, I feel like my, Daniel, how is, how old are you? I'm gonna. I'm actually. This is an early birthday present. I'm turning thirty on on uh, Sunday. Happy birthday, bro! Thank you. Bro, when I was when I was when I turned thirty, I have made at that point in my life, I'd made zero zero content for the internet in my entire life. Well, I just started my page, so. <laughs> Good. But definitely, definitely realize we, you haven't even, like, we're just in the beginning. Like, definitely realize that. So let me ask you, like, do you think I, given on what we just spoke about, I can't, like, if I don't want to do those shitty jobs, are you telling me that I, I have to just do those shitty jobs so that I can avoid monetizing or trying to create a product or... No, I'm telling you that if you try to monetize and sell to your audience when you don't have one, it's not going to go well. True. But I, <laughs> you know, at what point it's, it's, it's literally like going into a, a, a mixed martial arts UFC match, never training. I see what you mean. They don't value you because no, no, of Who the fuck's going to buy from you when you've done nothing for them? Motherfucker, do you know how many fucking things I've done for everybody in this audience and they still haven't signed up for Wine Text? And I've hey. asked for it all month. We can't get wine decks in Australia. <laughs> I know, brother. I know. But do, do you know what I mean, Daniel? Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. you know, trying to get your audience to convert is is very, very, very difficult. And most people, oh, in my head, man. most people, there's only two ways to do it. My way, which is build a brand for so goddamn long that you actually build such a deep relationship that most people, that most people get into a place where they're almost guilted. You know, like I feel like a lot of people are signing up for wine text right now just because they're like, damn, why do I buy wine from somebody else? Gary's brought me so much. Or the bizarro reverse version of me. They fucking lie. They fucking make people feel like shit. There's like two ways to have a good relationship. You either build them up. There's two ways to have a long-standing relationship. One, you build a person up and you give them so much love and you're building them up. And because of that, you stay together. Two. You actually tear them down and make them so insecure they don't feel that they can leave. It's on some Star Wars shit, bro. <laughs> the fine line between fucking the dark side and Jedi's is this fucking narrow. Yeah. The people that look like me on Instagram that are making that money, 90% of them are putting their audience in unhealthy relationships that are selling them fear and fucking bullshit. Yeah, agreed. I'm selling happiness, hope, and truth, and practicality. And the fine line in the beginning is super close. People think that me and other people are the same, and in 20 years, they'll realize we were completely fucking different.
Yeah, like hearing that from you just changed something in me because what you just said about like no one gives a fuck who I am and no one knows who the fuck I am. Like I've got like 80 followers. I just started my page like a few weeks ago or something, um, you know, on Instagram at least. Um, and I've got the same handle on Twitter and TikTok as well. Um, but how do I – so I still feel a bit confused about – I totally understand what you're saying about not trying to monetize because who the fuck am I? I'm very humble. I'm, I have no issue in accepting that. And the second you monetize, build the and, respect. The, and, the, and the second you monetize, every person that comes starting two person 200 on is going to see that you're about that selling shit life. And there's yeah. a million of fucking you. Like yeah. when people first stumble on me, how many people in the comments say say me right now in the comments were like we're waiting for the other shoe to drop for me to sell you my course or my fucking offsite or my fucking you know island or like pe like people like take a long time like waiting they're like all right this guy can't be really doing this like this guy's wait he's just he's just about to you know yeah 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 it's like people want want to buy from you. Like they literally are, Gary, when, when, how can No, we... no, no. I would argue the other thing, that they couldn't believe, like, why would I do this? Because they didn't know me yet. They didn't know that my entire business life was elsewhere. Well, that's the thing so, too, right? If my business life is focused on this stuff, and so then what do I literally... Patience. <laughs> but what do I do? If you're with... What do I do for money if I don't want to eat? Like, I don't like... know. But I don't know, like here's the fun part of it. It's fun to say I don't know because you don't want to do other things, which is amazing. Yeah. But I'm gonna say it again. Some people don't wanna train for 13 weeks after training for 10 years for their first UFC fight and they get their fucking ass beat. Bro, you're gonna get your ass beat. Mm. What's gonna happen? You're gonna go oh. in with that you know, $49 product, that $200 product and what? Convert two people and then what? Exactly. That's then what? Now you've too. now you've now you fucking went for the fucking kill. Now what? Now you've changed your relationship and your brand, which is okay. It's let me say this very clear. It is wildly okay to sell. Mm. Like, who knows? I might wake up in four years and be like, fuck it. I'm charging ten thousand dollars a month to be in tea with Gary V four days a week, and that's what I'm gonna do. I don't give a fuck. Like it's everything's okay. It's just it's just sell something you believe in and also know when you go in for the ask that if it doesn't convert, now you don't have the leverage. Do you think I'll feel more like I'll have more value in myself? Because I've always struggled to sell. Even though I've like always wanted to genuinely sell like when I was a trainer, I always felt guilty like I'm robbing someone, but at the same time valuing that I can bring good. Daniel, it's, it's because you didn't believe in the product. Which was I myself. promise you. There's, bro, you how long have you followed me? A couple of years. Good. You know how many businesses I have, but if I'm not promoting them, I don't feel like it's bringing the most value. It's even it's even the biggest insight to wine text. I so know how good it is. That's why I got loud. I had five sneakers with K Swiss. I had different loudness with them. Completely predicated. The economics were the same. Completely predicated on my own personal opinion on if it was worth ninety bucks. The reason so many people struggle to sell is they don't believe in what they're fucking selling. And then you have a small group of people, you have a small group of people that make a lot of money quickly because they don't give a fuck about anything. They have no conscious and they sell everything as if it's the best, but they're fucking dirt. They're broken. They're short term, right? And then you have the small percent, you know, the, the whole mass of the middle, the 90% right here, just completely are lost. You know, like, right? And then, like, just they don't believe in what they're selling. You've got 5% over here who win short term. They have a good run for five or seven years. They're the ones that go bankrupt. They're the ones who got fucked up, drug problems, like all sorts of shit. They're the ones that just sell on with no conscience. Mm. They don't give up. They are so broken. They can't care about you. They don't care about themselves. Then you have a small group that I hang out with, the other 5% that are in it for so long that they build brands. Bro, I haven't even started. Every <laughs> fucking person on earth is gonna know who I am. How do you how do you know when you're ready to make that switch from from giving, giving, giving to then asking? When you genuinely can't breathe without telling people about something to buy. Can't breathe. So it has nothing to do with the metrics of anything or 
Of course not. That's the people that win for five minutes. Hmm. What do you think I can do to get more engagement on things like Instagram in particular? Like with posting and stuff, I find I'm find I, getting- I not, I'm not worrying about the engagement by putting out your fucking truth. I made wine videos on YouTube in 2006 when it was just pirated content. Nobody gave a fuck, but I gave a fuck. I started making social media content when 95% of the world, 98% of the world didn't know what social media was. Bro, it's a marathon. Mm. Everyone's every question you've asked is a short term question. Yeah, I know, I know. I know you know. Um, I think for you, the formula, like if you were my best homie, I'd be like, bro, you have to find a side hustle that maintains so that you can go long on the thing that you want to be. Yeah, yeah. You see where I'm going? That's why yeah. I like flip that's why I like flipping so much. It teaches people how to market. It teaches people about supply and demand. As in are you talking about like garage sale and flipping or mm-hmm. You know, just everything, retail arbitrage, go into a discount store in Australia and flipping it. Like, you yeah. know, like, like I love that stuff. So I got to bounce, Dan. I love you. Good uh, luck. Yeah. Can you, can you yes. follow me? Can you follow me? I can. I'm happy can to ask, follow you. Can I ask you one thing real quick? Um, when you come back to Melbourne, can I potentially meet you? Yes. Hit up Dustin. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, Gary. You got Take it. Care. Take care, brother. Fuck. Dustin, give me, send me that URL. I typed it in wrong. I found some lady in Alabama. All right, let's keep it going. <laughs> Hello. I hope you can hear me. My internet's like going in and out a little bit here. It's um, hanging so in. What's your name? Norma. I'm Norma? And yes, and I'm from Texas, currently living in Saudi Arabia. And I don't know if you remember a couple of months back, we had a five minute FaceTime, but I was so nervous. All I could do was thank you for five minutes instead of- I remember. Five minutes. Okay. So my kids told me not to blow it today. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. It's been like a mom fail ever since then. And yeah, I have I have three kids, so it's been quite the weekend. Um, I have an Instagram account. My story isn't finished. And basically I put little blurbs every day, positive. <laughs> Uh, or certain life lessons that I put out there with humor. And I've had so many people message me saying, you know, you should make a, you write a book or put a book together or something. So I was wondering if I, you know, if I gathered all that information, should I self-publish or how do you self-publish or should I blog more? Because yep. Do you, why do you want to write a book? Well, I, I've always written, I have tons of journals from when I was little. I have a, a book of poems. I have, um, and this is what I go back to when I'm trying to, to look for content when I'm putting it out. And I put things out that are real. I put everything that I put out has happened to me in some way, shape, or form. Mistakes, fun stuff, embarrassing stuff. And because I'm in my 50s, I, I've had all these life lessons. And there's so many things that have happened bad things too, that people, it, it doesn't define you, you know, and when I put these out, I'll get messages like, wow, Norma, you know what, maybe I can do this after all. You know, I, I decided, uh, for example, last year um, to enter the half Ironman, just out of the blue, I decided, okay, I need to do this because it's been on my bucket list. I did it not knowing how to swim, not knowing how to bike, and I ran 30 years ago was the last time I ran. Love and it. I made it. I did Good it. for you. In eight hours and 11 minutes. Norma, so, why, so Norma, why why do you want to write the book? Like, let's go, let's go, let's go very like to the punchline because it because like it will help me give you the answer that I have, which is why. Because I feel like I have something to say that people great, that great. people can get from you know. So go to go. I got you. So I want you to go to this website called Google, and I want. <laughs> I've got all these, all my friends who are in their 50s and the grandmas in their 60s and 70s, they don't understand that social media and technology is a must. And I blog about that or I talk about that because you're not so, getting a teenage kid. So you, you need understand. to, so you need to type, how do I self-publish? Um, uh, what I would probably put in is how do I self-publish on Amazon? Um, Amazon. Yep. And I think. By this afternoon, you'll know how. Which is easy. I can do all that. That's that's not a problem. And just like you figured out the half Iron Man, you'll do this and 
the reason you want to write is you have something to say and away we go. Okay. Now, Instagram is where I've started and I have a following. How do I utilize all the technology to get the bigger audience or to get what I have to say out there? And do I, do I just focus on Instagram and just start a little bit, you know, on all the other social media? Yep. You know, I, you know like TikTok is, um, I love TikTok. I'm like obsessed with it. <laughs> This is, you know, I, I'm a, I will be consistent until the day I die on this. It is about putting out information. Okay. And Podcast, is- YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat. Like, it is forever and ever going to be the answer. Okay. Well, Twitter. Pe- people struggle with not having an audience. I preferred it. Well, I don't mind. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me stay there for a second because it's a super important point. People don't go to other platforms. Most of everybody here isn't signing up for Twitter right now or isn't going there because it's hard to amass an audience there because they don't like the feeling of what they think is wasting their time by posting something where nobody's listening. Absolutely. But had I not gone to Twitter, I wouldn't be on your show right now because that's how I got on. Even though I only have a hundred, I don't know, whatever it is, but but that's that. Look, the, the punchline is figure out which medium works for you, written word, audio, video, and then make as much of it as possible in as many places that you possibly can. Do it for as long as possible and then pop up your head in three years and see if that's given you the leverage to do the thing that you theoretically think you want to do. The point I was making earlier, but I, I preferred it, is I like the process more than the affirmation and the accolades and the successes that come along with it. Until people figure that out, they will continue to be insecure, audacious, ego-led to why they're not setting up accounts in other places. Once you set up those accounts and do it for a long period of time, you build enough of an audience that when you then tell them you have a self-published book, it will convert. Okay. All right. So um, it's not – I am trying to find my audience. I have relatable content because I'm kind of – you know, or I feel like I have like a smorgasbord of everything. I've, I had the strict childhood because I had a mother from another country. You know, so that was the first 30 years of my life. And then it wasn't until I moved away to Saudi Arabia that I was actually able to grow because I didn't have to worry about the judgment and stuff. And yep. so I, I, I get all those type followers. And then I've got the older age group and then I've got the moms, you know, why are you letting your kids listen to Gary Vee? Because my kids are 13 and 14. They don't understand that. I'm like, well, if my kids hadn't listened to you or if I hadn't listened to you, then one of my kids wouldn't be doing so well in school because he absolutely hated school because I was like school, 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 because that's how I was raised. And so to get past all that, and of course, again, this is what I write about or, or blog about and, and people are just like, you know, you need to tell people more. And so, you know, maybe I do have something that is relatable to, for people to want to read or listen to or what, you know, and I, yeah, I think you're, I think the game is completely strictly about you not overthinking it and you just executing like you did. I think Iron Man is the comp. You know, I think you're caught up in what 99.9% of society is caught up in right now, which is metrics of audience. There's, there's people who've written books that had zero followers on social media when the book came out and wrote best-selling books. Yeah. yeah. George Lucas had zero fans when he launched Star Wars. Like, yeah. you well, know, like. Not, yeah. It's not, it's not just, you know, self-publishing to see my name out there. It's self-published or, or writing something or blogging about something that can truly make a connection with somebody. Because the ones that I've had that have followed me, they the but my point, my point there, Norma, is if that's if that was actually the case, you wouldn't be asking the question. Okay. Right? Okay. Like, uh, like yeah. that was my case, and guess what? I never fucking asked anybody anything. I never read anything about anything. I never hit up anything about anything. I fucking did it. Okay. If that was the case, you would just do it. What time is it right now? Over here, it's uh, five four forty over here. 4.40 in the afternoon? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, like, you wouldn't be sitting in 4.40 p.m. 
in Saudi Arabia asking this question. You just be working on making more stuff. Yeah, and that's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that, right. that, got it? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's it, awesome. Bye, Norma. Thank you you didn't blow it this time, tell your kids. I will, they're all awesome. they're watching. So, yeah, Good, thanks. see ya. <laughs> Bye. Look, the Norma exchange is super important. Like, people are convincing themselves of things that aren't true to fit the narrative they want. The formula is super basic. Um, the more true you can go with the, con excuse me, with the content, the more likely it has an opportunity to hit somebody because it's authentic. You're now no longer selling vanilla. The reason so many people lose on Instagram, for example, with motivational content is because it's not their truth. They just think it works because they've seen four or five other people hit with it. Um, and then you just gotta contextually distribute it across all the platforms that have the attention. It's really simple. There's what's stopping you is not simple. It's grounded in childhood. It's grounded in so many variables, environment, chemicals, DNA, like, but like this game's simple. Let's keep it going. Hello, Gary. Hey brother. <laughs> How are you doing? This is fun surprise. What's oh yeah, you didn't know. So I initially know. I was I was gonna be on, on Friday, which was my 30th birthday. Uh, but birthday, things obviously brother. thank you very much um context you. for people who are watching is that i work for gary in vayner media london at vayner media ldn on instagram if you want to follow them um i guess context for you so i've known for a couple of weeks that i was going to be on because i asked zane as a cheeky birthday favor um and i know you've talked a bunch even today about sort of doing things that are your truth so a few months ago i started a website aimed at helping people get hired by top companies because it's something i sort of felt i was good at and yes. you know obviously working for you um ultimatecvtemplate.com the website still exists someone wants to check it out but i've been thinking oh. about it a lot so that's not what the question's about because i've pivoted so i've been into painting for like five years on and off as you can see behind yes. me yes um, but in the last, like since lockdown began, I've just become like freakishly Crazy. obsessed. Like, and I used to, so I did Kung Fu for about 12 years and I have a black belt in Kung Fu and maybe bar alcohol, <laughs> this is the thing that I've found myself most in love with. And I stopped drinking this year, so I need a new hobby. Um, so, and I've done a lot of research in the build up to this because I wanted to sort of have context on what you think. So I looked at every question about art and stuff that you've been asked historically. And in 2016, you said there's tens of thousands of artists who will give up on their craft and never make it, who would be millionaires if they were your business partner. So if we imagine this was our first meeting as your business partner and you are giving me advice for the next 10 years of how to like build something, what would your advice be? Um, to give your art to the, to the most widely known influencers on the platforms that matter the most. I would make art, I would post it on my Instagram, everywhere for that matter. I would make a TikTok of me making it. Um, and then I would give that art up front to, uh, you know, the Charlie D'Amelio's, the whoever they may be, your favorite footballer, you know, whoever, you know, literally DMing and, and you hit up 45 people, 580 players in the Premier League and one says yes. And then that one person doesn't even post it on their Instagram or their story and you're devastated because you finally got a yes. And you do that over and over and over until you have your quote unquote break. What you have in real life is you have me, right? Like if, if you know, your ability, what, what's your Instagram ha handle? Uh, Angus Boyle. So Angus, what, what, what's gonna happen now is you're gonna take one of those photos, literally, literally post it on your Instagram right now after this call because a bunch of people are following you right now and come up with some sort of price like $313, 330 pounds. So I, 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 when D Designs was on on Friday and shit blew up for her, I realized how, how big an opportunity this show was. So I built a website over the weekend and arbitrarily priced the art. So <laughs> what's the URL? artbyangus.com. Artbyangus.com. Art. Super smart. Dustin, get on that real quick. So like, yeah, I mean, very honestly, your career's started right now. Like here it is. You know, I think you need, to, a lot of my fans are American based though. This is wildly global. You'll have to figure, make sure you don't get killed on shipping. Luckily it's probably, uh, is your art on paper or is it on canvas? Like how heavy is it? Uh, the bigger ones are all on canvas. I made some super light ones on cardboard. Love it. Like, you know, like, uh, look, I think this is how it works, bro. <laughs> nice dude. <laughs> so good.
<laughs> yeah, like, like this is amazing. Keep scrolling. I thought you were painting with your feet for a second. I was about to go crazy. <laughs> Keep scrolling, Dustin. Yeah, see, like, like honestly, you're gonna sell these things right now. Like, it's just gonna happen. And, and I think it's fucking amazing. And do you ship everywhere? Uh, yeah, I'll have to figure that out. But yeah, you'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, brother. I honestly, I think, I think to be very frank, I think your career, the the end of your Vayner media career and the beginning of your art career might be happening literally in this moment. And that makes me so fucking happy. Like, first of all, you're really good. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank it's you. really good. Hit small or medium small. Yeah, man. I mean, obviously you've got a lot of good vibe stuff too, which is going to do well with my audience. And then, you know, like this is just how it is, man. Like every art, like if Jay Leno wasn't pushed by his management, you know, he would have never been who he was. Like some people are the art and then some people need a break. Some people need a partner in crime. Somebody needs a cosign. You have the luxury of being a great executive at our company that makes me desperately try to get everybody to buy a piece of your art right now. And so you built up that leverage with somebody who can give you that cosign. There's a lot of people right now who don't have me or anything that looks like me in their world. So what they have to do is kind of what I did. I mean, my cosign in a lot of ways was dignation, right? Like. Like it was Kevin Rose and Alex Elbrecht who kind of gave me a shout out on Dignation in like 2005, 2006 internet. And that kind of was my little spark. And you know, it always happens. It happens all the time. And so, you know, hopefully this is the beginning of yours. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. Love you back, brother. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. That was a fun surprise. Good job, Dustin. I think it's good people, real good people. All right, let's keep this going. Hey Gary. Good morning. Good morning, brother. How do you pronounce your name? A line. Like, a line. Yeah, like a straight line. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Very cool. Um, you know, how's quarantine going? Pretty well. How about for you? I'm in Tucson, Arizona, so I'm enjoying the heat um, while being quarantined, so it's been good. Good. I love it. Um, well, I have two questions for you uh, related to each other, um, but I want to start off by telling you a little bit about, about the project that I have going on um, right now. So I got into the real estate industry um, to build spec houses. And so that's been going well. I built one and I sold the first house. Um, I financed that with the help of my dad. He let me, um, you know, he supported me and he lent me some money. Um, and I sold that one and now I'm on to the second house. Um, so that's been good. But obviously I want to get to the point where I'm building, you know, 20 houses, 50 houses, 100 houses at a time. And that'll take okay. time. I've got patience. I've got time. Um, I'm in college. I'm a 20 year old college student. So I guess like my question for you is as a 20 year old college student, how do I go out there and find investors? How do I go out there and find cash? Because I personally don't have enough cash in the of bank. Course. By spending no time convincing people. So to turn that. Me, into want, want, me to, want, me, want me to bring that yeah. down? There's a 22% chance I would give you money when I'm most liquid. There's a 0% chance that 99% of people would give you money. There's a whole group of people that would actually give you money. You need to figure it out, right? Like you, do you, you know, obviously knock on wood, thank God, you had a situation where your father could help you a little bit. So I'm sure it's running through your mind. Your dad probably runs in some circles where you can go into that world. Do you even want to go there? How much do you want to feel like you built this on your own two feet, not with your dad? That's always a tough thing for a 20 year old. I, I struggled with going into my dad, even though I was going to go into my dad's business to help him build his business. I even struggled with that. So I understand yeah. that. Um, but the no, other thing I, 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 I don't see that as a problem. I guess like good. I've always been very close to my dad. So Great. Um, I I'm sure your dad has, I'm sure your dad has friends. Um, yeah. It all <laughs> depends. On, it all depends on your consciousness. So for example, I, I'm not great at raising money because I don't I don't mind losing every dollar I have, but in my DNA, I struggle with the idea of losing other people's money. Right. Yeah. So like that that's a shortcoming of mine in some ways, because it's led to me leaving money on the table where I could have raised capital. The other thing is I think you map the five hundred richest people in Arizona in in, you know, and you know, do uh, you go to Santa Clara? Yeah, I go to Santa Clara. I would I would Google, you know most successful alumni from Santa Clara history, enter, see the whole list, then hit them up on LinkedIn and, and Instagram. The punchline is you just keep asking until someone says yes, instead of dwelling on the people that are saying no. 
I think you get as many five minute conversations as possible. And the second yeah. you know that the person's not interesting or they're just, you know, there's been meetings that people have taken because somebody else co-signed me and I wanted to have the meeting. And literally I jumped out of the meeting within five minutes because I could realize that the person was there just because the other person asked them and they weren't interested. And I wasn't interested in wasting my time, let alone theirs. Okay. So basically just go out there and, you know, hustle and reach, reach as many people as I can. An unconscious framework unconscious like just completely unemotional unconscious robotic framework of giving your best pitch and having no feelings goose egg zero fucking feelings when somebody's like not interested you're too young you know i don't trust you yeah and you know you a lot of kids ask me like how do i get people to respect me you don't you can't change the fact that you're 20 and you look 16. okay that's not that's not changing yeah right and so I lived that life. Yes, Dustin, 35, Sorry. looking like 16. <laughs> Your video's coming in a little choppy, so I was just... Who, mine? Yeah, now it's better. Oh. Because once, like I said, the wind, once the windows keep alternating, it gets better. But yeah, now you're good. Align, I think um, I think it's about zero emotion okay. to the no. Everybody, like 98% of this audience right now in the comment section, all of their struggles comes because they're emotional about the no. And then they fucking try to convince like Uncle Harry or fucking rich man Magoo in town why they're the right thing. Don't convince the non convincible Yeah. Is that, is that, so like, I guess like that kind of covers my second question for you. Is that the same answer you would give me as to how do I scale this at this stage in my life? How do I get- Scale, you know? scale, scale is single-handedly your biggest vulnerability. Okay. The addiction for scale in the business world right now has completely fucked everyone. The amount of businesses that are about to go out of business in this next year, because they overvalued scale when they had something, is remarkable. Wine text, right? Obviously, in a year you'll be able to sign up, and I appreciate that. You know, I'm scaling it slowly. The economics have to work. I can run ads crazy to like get more users and scale. And, but then it's, but ec the economics aren't there and the vulnerability would become there. And I'd rather be the fucking tortoise. Align, I'm telling you right now, bro, like you need to figure out why, honestly, why do you want to scale um, your own insecurities and want to show everybody you can do it by yourself? Uh, just because you think it's right, because all the fucking Elon Musk's and Shmilang Bucks and Beyond Bucks are telling you. Uh, your dad told you so. Uh, you read one book and you fucking thought it was cool. Um, you you want as much money as possible to hook up with you know people because you're going to use the money to like hook up. Like I don't know why, but you need to realize that scale when you have this little experience is fucking dangerous. So it's all about that macro patience you always talk about. But working 17 hours a day, bleeding yeah. out if you're that fucking ambitious and it makes you that happy. So that so that micro speed, that macro patience. It's my most important framework because if you're happy and you know a lot of people don't, you know, micro, they burn themselves out because they actually don't like it. They just wanted the money. Yeah. You know, the scale, the money, the win, the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine, those are all the poisons. It's cliche. It's true as fuck. I've watched it for the last 20 years. I've seen so many of my friends look like they were winning, raise a ton of capital, fucking be the dominators at South by Southwest and four years later be out of a job. Yeah. I've just, I've, I've seen this rodeo, bro. Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely. I, I, I lived it when you were born, you know? So like I watched it. So I just, I don't want you to put scale on a pedestal. I yeah, want you to put, I want you to put a foundation on the pedestal. I see, I see what you're saying. So um, I don't want to take much of your time, but- It's okay. Um, you know, so I, I listen to Tony Robbins. I've gone to one of his seminars and he talks a lot about, you know, winter, winter is my season. So, so how do we leverage, you know, the, the environment that we're living in right now? Um, Per se, I don't know. I don't know. I apologize. What does that mean? Does that mean the tough times is a good time? Yeah, the, or the tough times is a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you got really lucky because a lot of people who are 30 who did over leverage themselves never saw tough times from 20 to 30 and they didn't realize they existed. I mean, people are getting slayed right now. Align. Like it's kind of hidden right now because there's still some bailouts. We're not back to real life. 
But I'm telling you right now, bro, some of those coolest people on Instagram and on the internet are gonna be real, 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 real quiet in December, in February, in next March, a year from today. You know, because like people are out. Yeah. It's not just J. Crew. Yes, Dustin. It's just happening you again. Fixing? Yeah. yeah, no worries. <laughs> you know, so so you know, I, I think that for you, I don't think you can taking advantage of this time requires liquid if you want to do it financially. Yeah. So people are sitting a ton of cash, you're gonna buy up shit cheap. Or it's gonna require realizing this is a great moment to foundationally teach you that getting over leveraged because you valued scale over fundamentals is something you don't want to do. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Awesome. Yeah, that, luck, well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you, I appreciate the help. Well, since I'm not going to get to another one, I'm going to talk to Dustin. Let me keep you here for one more second. Okay. Any insight to why you want scale? Um, you know, I mean, I'm not desperate for scale right now. I guess maybe I didn't communicate that because I know I'm I know I'm young. Like I'm 20 years old. I'm I'm a sophomore in college. I have no need to be the biggest, you know, real estate company. So it's more out of, curi more out of curiosity of how to more, do it? Yeah, it's more out of, you know, like I got the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I want to see. You know what You know what the funny answer is? It's still the same answer. Okay, yeah. No, I'm yeah. Gonna build, was, I'm going to build, I'm going to, I'm going to build, I'm going to build the biggest fucking scale of all time. And I worked in a yeah. liquor store when I was 32. Yeah. I mean, that. I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It makes sense. You know, makes sense. Yeah, because if you know, to me, it's just like people are confused on how long this game is. Mm -hmm. I'm 24 years older than you. Yeah, you were negative fucking four. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. like you know, like when I was your age, you were negative fucking four. Yeah, I've got time. I've got time. No, 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 no. You have an uncom. You know, think of in a sporting analogy. You haven't even woke up from your bed and drove to the stadium yet. You're still fucking sleeping in your bed the day of the game. If once you actually, I believe the single biggest strength I have is my relationship with time. Because once you have that relationship with time, all the shit that comes out of my mouth makes a lot more sense. If you actually understood that you were gonna live for 100 more years, then you will fucking really start thinking about shit differently and you won't make the moves of the cliche 27 year old that's got it like that. There's been a lot of lines that have lost because they have it like that. Their circumstance worked out with family. They themselves have it and they got confident between 20 and 27 and then they went in for the kill and it killed them. I know all those guys. And the difference between those guys and me and others is that patience. And then when you know, you know. I put all my liquid assets into fucking Facebook, all of them. If Facebook flopped, I would have zero. <laughs> but it was written, there was no risk. I was too experienced at the time. I was, that was already 10 years into my game. I'd seen email, I'd seen fucking Google AdWords, I'd seen YouTube, MySpace, friends, like I seen it. I met Zucks, I hung for a year and a half. I watched the executives, I knew Boz, I fucking knew Dave Morin, I knew the culture. I knew the product, I watched, I looked at the math. I wasn't guessing, I wasn't thinking in theory, I was relying on experience. And then I struck like a fucking cobra. Got it? <laughs> I got it, got it. Be ready, your moment will, you, there, you will have 30 moments. Everyone's like, this is my moment. Mm -mm. If you're good enough, you'll have 30 fucking moments. Yeah. See I appreciate it. it. Got you. That is the show today. Sorry about the uh, video fucked up. Yeah, it just comes in a little blurry. But, I mean, it wasn't like cutting in and out or anything. It was just blurry. How about when I said fucking struck like a cobra? Yeah, I think it was blurry. <laughs> it's still blurry right now. One second. You know what's not blurry? Winetext.com. That's true. $65 red for $20 fucking eight dollars today, Dustin. Mm -hmm. uh, please sign up for winetext.com. It is literally the single best service of all time. See ya.
I realize a lot of you that watch Tea with Gary V aren't signed up for my podcast. That makes me sad. Here's what you're missing out on. No, you, you like helped me so much. Thank you, bro. And like, you know, navigating, like it's all mindset. You're preaching. Like when I, when I entered college, I had such a bad mindset. Yeah. Because I was like, you know, I don't really want to be here. Like, yeah. I just want to work. Yeah. But like listening to the podcast every day, having like positivity in my ears has really just like helped me along. Gary, if the mindset has been skewed, how can you bring it back? And I answered with, by surrounding yourself with people who have the mindset you aspire to. Mold, and I mean mold, your mindset by what you consume and with whom you consume it. If you think your life is shit, your life is shit. Keep listening to more of my content. You need fucking positivity coming through your ears. When fucking all that negativity's come in your head, put your fucking headphones in and listen to positivity. If you can't move out yet, put shit in your ears. You walk in, put the fucking headphones on in your house, close your door, and fucking listen. You can listen while you're driving. You can listen while you're traveling. You can listen while you're working out. You can listen while you're walking the dog. Like, find your shit. Like, don't listen to the fucking the people that shit on you. Like, get in your own head. Put positivity around you. Drop loser friends. Like, that negativity, that you're hearing, you gotta get that the fuck out of your life. You need to put your fucking ear pods in and listen to positivity 24 seven and get you through that shit, do you understand? When your surroundings are shit, your insides gotta be positive. The fact that you're even here means you're fucking halfway home.